personal development roadmap. So, what we're going to be talking about today is making your life better. So, you've decided that there's got to be something more to life. You want it to be better, but you don't know where to start. Well, this is where your roadmap comes in. It's going to take you from point A to point B. Okay. It's going to give you an idea of what goals you want to pursue, of what areas of your life you really need to improve to make the most impact, and also how long it's going to take, what the end goal is, and how you can stay committed to these goals so that you won't fall off the wagon again. Let's begin. Potential. What we want to learn first is the potential of the human landscape. This is everything that's possible for you to do. How can you know what you want to improve about your life if you don't know what you can improve about your life? This also involves some form of self-discovery where you learn a little bit about yourself so you can know what you need to improve about yourself. Because the accomplished socially doesn't need to go to more social events. What he probably needs is to be more in touch with himself. The closed off introvert doesn't need more self-reflection. He probably needs more extroverted activities and socialization with friends, building relationships. However, this isn't always true either. There's always stipulations and different situations for different people. So you need to know where you're going to improve your life. Boom! If you want to know what this is, stick around for a little bit. Because in this section, we're going to cover everything that you can develop about yourself. What this helps you do is know where your potential's at. So, the first thing we're going to start with is... Intelligences. There's actually nine types of intelligences. These are all really important and every single thing you can develop in. A lot of people only think about logical intelligence when they think about intelligence, but that's actually one of only nine. So the other eight are linguistic intelligence, which is book smarts, you know, words. Intrapersonal intelligence, which is knowing yourself, your values, your strengths, weaknesses. You have kinesthetic intelligence, which is awareness of your body. People who are developed in this are usually good at sports. And then there's musical intelligence, visual spatial intelligence, pretty self-explanatory. There's interpersonal intelligence, which is also known more commonly as emotional intelligence. And what this is, is a realization of others' feelings. People who are developed in this usually are really empathic, sympathetic, and they seem to know what someone's thinking before everyone else does. Naturalistic intelligence, which is develop a uh, connection with nature. Existential intelligence, which is a de development in connection with spirituality. So, that's just one of a few types of ways to develop yourself. So, the next one we're going to look at is... Skill development. This is very broad and very basic. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's something that you can master and you can put a lot of time and practice into that usually, if you're doing this the right way, will connect with your higher values and purposes and bring you more fulfillment in life. Examples include photography, drawing, art, reading, literature, math, buying shoes, whatever you want. So the next one we're going to look at is behavioral development. This mostly consists of habits and tendencies. So what you can do is break a new break an old habit or build a new habit. 
If you want to look into this, a book I highly recommend is Atomic Habits. If you haven't read it already, pick it up at your local bookstore. It's just about everywhere. If you have, you know step-by-step -step formula to creating habits and breaking old ones. You know how important that habits can be in your life. I recently started a loving-kindness habit where I do it every evening and then I post a YouTube video on this channel. You can check out some of my other videos. But it has been helping me tremendously in life because if you just improve 1% every day, by the end of the year, you'll be 37 times better. Don't sleep on habits. Now, the last and final way, which will explain this magical wheel we have over here, is personality development. Personality development mostly just includes knowing yourself, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and it's based upon the theory that you're born with a certain personality from birth and you can't change that throughout your life. However, you can live through more integrated parts of it and learn to know your, your personality type strengths and weaknesses and use them to your advantage. So, there's been a lot of tests for personality types and I'm sure you've heard of it. Things like Big Five test, Myers-Briggs test, and something you've probably taken in high school before and forgot about because it's kind of useless. The best one I've found is that Enneagram test, which looks like this. It looks really confusing at first, and you're probably wondering what all this means. But there's basically um, nine personality types, and each one has a direction of growth and a, di a direction of stress. So, for example, three, the direction of growth is to six, and the direction of stress is to nine. So, you want to go to, into a six. Three is the achiever, so achievers often become closed off from people and uncooperative because they just go cutthroat if they're unhealthy. But if you go more in the direction of a six, which um, is more connected with people, then you can develop yourself. Now, this is a really useful test, so what you want to do is just look up three free Enneagram test. Um, I'll spell that out for you here. So just look that up and you'll be instantly re revolutionized in where your areas of uh, improvement can be. Alright, so that's the areas. The next step of spiritual development. The next step of the personal development roadmap we're going to look at is a vision. This part's fun. Basically what you want to do here is figure out what do I want to be? And really ask yourself this question, why are you pursuing personal development? What's the end goal here? There's a lot of different theories on this and it's different for everyone. Some people believe that you want to be the uber smirch or the superman you want to be perfectly integrated, whatever that means for you. And some people believe that our goal is self-actualization, as in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which you've probably seen. It looks a little bit like this, and it has a certain amount of levels. And you start off with just like food, water, sex, your basic needs. You go up to um, increasingly more more actualized levels of personality until you make it to the very top when you're going to get into self-actualization. So this pyramid is very important because it gives you an idea of where to start. Because if you don't feel included within your peers, then self-actualization is going to be really difficult. It doesn't mean to sacrifice your type and your personality just so that you can fit in with your peers, but it means that you may need to find a new friend group before you can fully feel safe and start self-actualizing. This is important. What you want here is an end goal that can motivate you and keep you going when things are tough. Because if you don't know what you're shooting towards, then you're not going to reach it. Trust me, I've tried. You have to start with the end in mind, which is one of the most important principles in um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is a great book. I'm sure you've read it. If you haven't, go read it. Anyway. What do I want to be? Decide. Alright. Decided. Let's move on. The third step of this is to focus. 
focus. No, not that type of focus. What we want to do is pluck what you want to focus on. So we've gone over all of these things, all of these lines of intelligences, all these skills you can develop, behavioral change, habits that you can include, areas of growth in your personality, because I'm sure you've taken that Enneagram test. And you have a ton of ideas running through your mind. You've incorporated a vision and found out who you want to be, and you have the end goal. So all you need to do now is get started. And the way you do that is first picking what you want to get started on. Now, it's probably going to be really overwhelming, and I understand that at first. But the, the, main, the main part of this is asking yourself these two key questions. What do I want to improve most about myself right now? And what interests me in this moment? So, the things that interest you the most are going to be easier for you to develop. And it's just something that's been studied time and time again. When you want to do something, you're going to get more results from it. Think about when you've learned something at home. It was probably way more fun than what you learned at school. Even if what you learned at school was just as important, the stuff that you choose to learn on your own is much more fun. And that's the way we get started with this. You don't want to start with the hardest thing. You want to start with something easy that will get you motivated. Start with something fun that you want to develop. For me, that's social skills, and getting out there and talking to people, having relationships, and um, just developing my personality and kindness, you know, and that's that's what interests me, and it gives me a passion in life. My vision is to be someone eventually with a group of friends who all challenge each other and um, improve each other, and I think that's great. So find something like that for you. Think about everything we've done. Pick what interests you the most and then come back because you're ready for step four. The fifth big step is setting goals. A lot of people set really, really big goals, but that's not the point of what we're trying to do here. These are little things that keep you motivated along the way so you can have something to shoot for. When you want to dream big, do that in your vision. These goals are meant to be practical, achievable steps on your way to development. Another way to think of that is to think mini goals. Something that you can achieve in a month or a week even, maybe even a day. Start small, get bigger. Remember, these are just steps. The next big step in your path is your schedule. So you've figured out in previous steps what you want your practice to be, what your vision is, and what your goals are. Now you need to just see where this fits into your life. So you need to really think about how much time you have. There's not one specific time that you should be spending on this. Just do as much as you feel is reasonable to you. If you're looking to master an instrument, you don't need to play for four hours a day. Even just half an hour, or even 15 minutes is good enough. If you have an hour, that's great. But whatever you have is fine. Look at your day. Find empty time. This may have been previously occupied by TV, or reading, or something else that you're okay with letting go with now, because remember, personal development is pretty much the most important thing you can do with your life. Finding empty time is going to be difficult, but what well, two most important times of the day that you want to think about adding this to is morning or night. Now there's advantages and disadvantages to either, but really it just comes down to personal preference. But these two times are really easy because the morning, you can do it before everything gets going, and you can do it before the whole hectic of the day starts. At night, it's nice because you can do it after thing, things have already cooled down. You can know that you'll always have time for it because you're going to be cooling down for bed and you can, you can fit it in and make sure you remember it. This can also help you get better sleep because if it's part of your evening routine, which you develop over time, then your body will start knowing, okay, after I practice my music, it's time to go to bed. Remember, the key to this is 
Habits, habit stack. This is a phrase that's found in the book Atomic Habits that I've mentioned a couple times already in this video. But the key here is you take one habit that you have already and then stack the ne this next one on top of it. If you already brush your teeth before bed, you can say, every day before I brush my teeth, I'm going to practice my guitar for 15 minutes. Or, if you already put your clothes out for the next day before you end your day, you can say, every day after I put my clothes out for the next day, I'm going to write music for 50 minutes. Whatever you need. That's setting your schedule. There's just one step left. Stick it out, and you'll be on your way to personal development. The final step is... Monitor your progress. This is an important step because if you don't know what's going well and what's not, then you're never going to be able to get on the most efficient path possible. I know many times in my life I've been doing something over and over without even making that much results or getting positive activity in my life. One such thing for me was affirmations. They work for a lot of people, they just didn't work for me. And then I stopped, and my life didn't get any worse. Another thing to remember about monitoring your progress is that sometimes your own perceptions of progress are diluted because you see yourself every day and you want progress. You expect progress, and so you will often see progress. The mind comes up with things very easily if they believe that they'll be better for your survival. However, it can help to bring on a third party authority in order to get someone else's opinion on the subject. Find a close friend or family member to tell you if they think you've been improving. Someone you know is going to be someone you know is going to be honest with you and will really tell you the truth. I wrote third friends. I messed it up. It means third party. You're not allowed to have friends. No, I'm just kidding. You can have friends. Just make sure they're true. The next thing to remember about monitoring your progress is that you want to be really aware while you're practicing so that you can know where you're at. This is really important because if you're not aware of yourself while you're practicing, you're not going to know if you're improving or not. This also is going to speed up your results because you're going to be more focused. It goes back time and time again to your integration into the topic. So if you really want to be doing something, then you're going to be more focused. So go back. If you don't feel focused, you might be setting yourself up for failure by picking the wrong zone. But if this has been, if you're this two weeks in and you're losing focus, then just make sure to dial it up. Just make remind yourself. If you become one percent better every time, it'll be thirty times better in a year. So just focus on a little bit more aware every time. You don't have to be that much more. This is a large, large scheme, and it's going to take your whole life. Commit your whole life to developing yourself. This isn't just a one-year thing or a one, one skill. It's, there's many, many opportunities, and it's going to take you decades. It's going to take you the rest of your life, because there really is no perfect human. Some people believe in divine perfect humans, but most people agree that it's not... It's not um, possible for us to attain that. The joy really comes in the process of getting there. I'm still going there. The most spiritually enlightened people you know, the Dalai Lama, there's, he's still getting there. No one is perfect. Remember that. To wrap up, I'm just going to say that this isn't easy. This isn't. So, the first time you do this, just make sure that it's, it's something that you will actually be able to do and you enjoy doing. If you're looking to master a skill, make sure it's not something that someone else told you to do. Make sure it's something that you really want to do. With that, this has been Zen Tech. Stay Zen.